Hello everyone, today we're going to be delving a little bit further in detail into the basic data types that C offers us and we're going to be looking at some of the number systems or some of the bases that we can use to express values in C. So now that we know what we're going to be talking about, let's begin. So now let's start looking at the basic data types, starting with signed integers. So as, as you can see, we have a couple of signed integer types, and the only difference between them is the amount of storage they have. And coincidentally, the more storage we have, the larger the range of values we can represent. So in this table, as we can see, we have the size of each signed integer type, followed by the name of the type, then the conversion specifier we would use, and lastly, the, the range of values we can represent. You may have a couple of questions about this range, uh, like, why am I expressing these exponents like this? Why do I add this minus one to it? And this is because I just want to emphasize that sign integers dedicate one of their bits to keep track of the sign. So this bit does not contribute to the magnitude of the value. And this is why we have this minus one, because we don't use one of those bits. And another question that you might have is, why do we subtract one from the positive side of the range? And this is just because we have to keep track of the number zero. Then we have the unsigned integer types, which are nearly identical to the signed integers. Uh, as we can see, the sizes are the same. The names are identical, except for the fact they have the unsigned keyword. Uh, the conversion specifiers look really similar, except they use a U instead of a D. And lastly, the ranges start from zero and the exponents don't have that minus one to them. And this is because now that we don't have a sign, all values must be positive or zero. Uh, so we don't have to dedicate a bit for the sign. We can actually use that bit that we would have otherwise dedicated for the sign to actually contribute to the magnitude of the value. Now let's look at the internal form or how we represent these uh, signed integers in memory. So sign integers dedicate their leftmost bit to the sign, so it keeps track of the sign. This is known as the sign bit. And then the remaining bits are dedicated for the binary representation. First, we convert our number into binary. And if there's any bits remaining in this binary representation section, we just keep adding zeros to the left of our number until all our bits are used. But now, if the sign bit is zero, we just combine the sign bit and the binary representation, and we're done. If the sign bit is one, we perform an operation called two's complement on the binary representation. To perform two's complement, we have to perform two steps, which are to flip all the bits. So if it's a one, we turn it into a zero, and if it's a zero, we turn it into a one. And lastly, we add one to this value. And then, we combine the new binary representation with a signed bit, and we're done. Finding the internal form of an unsigned integer is significantly easier uh, because we don't have to keep track of the signed bit. So all we do is we convert our value into binary. And again, we just keep adding zeros to the left of this binary representation until all of our bits are used. So now let's move on into the floating point types. Floating point types are signed only, so that means there is no unsigned version. And as you can see, there's only two of them. These are float and double. Here are the conversion specifiers that we use for them. And lastly, you may be able to notice that we specify a precision instead of a range. And this is because the range of values from zero to the largest value is the same as the range of values from zero to the smallest value. So if we were to specify the range, you'd go from negative 3.4 times 10 to the 38 to positive 3.4 times 10 to the 38. But what we really care about is the precision. So the smallest fractional value that we can represent to the largest fractional value that we can represent. So we've already learned how to convert uh, a number from decimal to a floating point binary number. So the only new concept here is how we store positive and negative floating point numbers. And the only difference between a positive floating point number and a negative floating point number is just the sign bit, which is the leftmost bit. 
and then the rest of the binary representation remains unchanged. Lastly, we go to Booleans. So we've talked about Booleans before, and we said that a Boolean is just a value that can be value to true and false. And we've mentioned beforehand that any value that has a binary representation of all zeros is considered false, and any other value is considered true. But Boolean is an actual data type that we can use in C. So to use this bool data type, we need to include this library called stdbool.h, and the values that it can hold are true or false. But bool is just a, okay, but bool is just essentially an 8-bit integer. That's all it is. And actually, if we go to VS Code, yeah, if I hover over true, if I, over, if I hover over this value true, it says pound define true one. And what this is, it's a macro. So it just says, every time you see this true value, replace that with one. So essentially it's saying that true is essentially just the value one. And false is just essentially the value zero. So bool is really just an eight bit integer. So that's really all we needed to know about the basic data types. In C. So now let's move on to the different number systems or bases we can use to express values in C. So now let's start talking about different number systems or bases that we can use to express values in C. Firstly, we have base 10 or decimal, and decimal has 10 unique digits ranging from zero to nine. And in every base 10 number, every place value represents a power of 10. So if we look at this number, uh, 18,029, we can separate that into the thousands place, the hundreds place, the tens place, and then the ones place. And we just get the final value by adding all these values together. And in order to print out a decimal value, you use the percent %d conversion specifier. Now we have binary. So binary has two unique numbers, which are zero and one. In a base two number, each place value corresponds to a power of two. So we can separate that into the ones place, the twos place, the fours place, the eights place, sixteens place, and so on and so on. And we get the final value by just adding these values together. And we can express a binary value in C by prefixing it with zero B. And if we want to print a value as binary, we don't really have a conversion specifier for that. If we go to VS Code, as we can see, I'm expressing uh, the same number, 56, in the different uh, bases that we're going to be looking at. So first is decimal. And as you can see, it equals 56 when I hover over the value. And if I want to express in binary, I have to prefix the value in 0B. And then I can write the number in binary. And if I hover over this, as you can see, it says 56. Now we're going to move into octal or base 8. Base 8 has seven, or no, base eight has eight unique digits ranging from zero to seven. And in base eight, every number place corresponds to power of eight. So 12 in decimal corresponds to one, four, or 14, to one, four in octal. And as you can see, we can express 12 as four times eight to the power of zero plus one times eight to the power of zero, which is eight plus four. And that equals 12. We can express a value in octal by prefixing it with zero. And if we want to print a value in octal, we can use the percent %o conversion specifier. So if we go back to VS Code, we can see that we're expressing 56 in octal with 0, 7, 0. And as you can see, it's 56. And I'm printing out 56 in octal by using the percent O conversion specifier. Lastly, we're going to look at base 16 or hexadecimal. So hexadecimal has 16 unique digits uh, correspond, uh, going from 0 to F, F standing for 15. And in each base 16 number, every number place corresponds to, to a power of 16. We can express a value in hexadecimal uh, by prefixing it with 0x. And if we want to print out a value as hexadecimal, we use the percent %x 
conversion specifier. So if we go back to this code, we can see that I'm expressing 56 in hexadecimal as 0x38. And I'm trying to print out this 56 value. And lastly, we're also going to print 56 as hexadecimal uh, with a percent %x conversion specifier. So let's run this and see what we get. As you can see, when I run this program, I get the values printed out by these conversion specifiers. And when I print, uh, and when I print the value of d in decimal, I just get 56, 56 again. And we don't have a conversion specifier for binary. When I try to print it out in octal, I get 70, which is the same as O. And lastly, when I try to print it out in hexadecimal, I get 38, which is what we've got over here. And the last point I want to make is why we would want to use base 16. And it's because hexadecimal is a shortcut for writing binary. Each hexadecimal digit corresponds to four bits. And as you can see, I just have an example mapping down here where 0x0 corresponds to 0000, zero, zero, zero all the way to uh, something like 0xc, which corresponds to 1100. Zero, zero. And I have an example here where I have uh, this number in binary, which corresponds to these four hexadecimal digits, which are B03F. So this is all we really need to know about the basic data types that C offers us and uh, about the different bases that we can use to express values.